Okay, folks, take your bulletin, look there with me, give a few announcements as we're getting ready to start the service today. Okay. Oh, I got the wrong bulletin. Oh, okay. Look there with me. Daniel will probably mention about the thing next Sunday night we're going to have here at the church. It's our second family fun night during the summer here. Time of fellowship and watermelon eating competition, all that stuff. He'll tell you a little more about that. And about our camp, we got about a six-minute video we're going to show you of the young people at camp. Seventy-three campers, juniors went this week, and ten made professions of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. So, and three of them went with the group that we took over there. That's just wonderful. Um, uh, let's see here. He'll let you know about my vacation Bible school. Uh, it is on August the 8th through the 12th. Uh, Mystery of the buried cash. We need workers. We need folks helping for decoration and all the workers in the, in the Bible school. Should be a great time. Chase Williams, young evangelist, does illusions. He'll be with us on that Sunday prior to the Bible school, and he'll be with us the entire week. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see here. And further down the road on our anniversary on September 11th, it just happens to fall on September 11th this year. And our anniversary is always the second Sunday in September, and it's going to have a special emergency services Sunday uh, with an anniversary meal, of course, afterwards. So if you would, help us start inviting firemen and policemen and EMTs and 911 operators and all that. We'll have a special day that day and make it special for them. We have some gifts, nice gifts for each of those. Um, I think that's about it. The memory verse we'll get to in a little bit tonight in the service. You'll have a chance to say that memory verse. And we have a little gift for you as you come and do that tonight. On the back of the bulletin, summer camp. We just finished with the juniors. And then two, let's see, three on the third week from now, two weeks from now, the third week we have our teens going to camp. And you see Do, what is that, Mr. Do Hickey there? What do you call it? Hickey? Uh, What's that? Dewey. Dewey Hickeyson there on the back of the thing there. And he was showed up at camp this week, and the young people had a great time. And, and uh, like I say, just a good week. All right, I think that's about it. The choir's going to sing for you this time, and we'll get right into the service. Glad you're here today. I got so much. He 
has brought me from I've got so much to thank him for I've got so much to thank him for All right, if you please get your song books you're not going to make sure I got the right one here and I have a songbook. Turn to number 617 and stand with me, if you will, please. Number 617. And we will go ahead and sing our meet and greet. We'll sing one verse of this song and get out there and shake everyone's hands. Let them know how beautiful they are. Um, do it nicely. We don't want to lie in church, okay? So we'll come back and sing the second verse when we get back. So the first verse in number 617, great and mighty. We'll come back and sing the second verse. Here we go. <clears throat> Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift His banner, let the anthem ring. Praises to our mighty King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. All right, go ahead and shake some hands.
All right, let's all get back to our seats and grab your songbooks again. That's number 617, Great and Mighty. And we're going to sing that second verse. Huh? Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Number 617, let's get back to our seats on that second verse. Here we go. <clears throat> sing to Jesus with a song of praise. Sing to Jesus with praise. Sing to Jesus with a song of praise. Sing to Jesus with praise. Fill the heavens with a mighty voice. Bless his name, let all rejoice. Sing to Jesus with a song of praise. Sing to Jesus with praise. Let's do that one again. Here we go. Sing to Jesus with a song of praise. Sing to Jesus with praise. Sing to Jesus with a song of praise. Sing to Jesus with praise. Fill the heavens with a mighty voice. Bless his name, let all rejoice. Sing to Jesus with a song of praise. Sing to Jesus with praise. Amen. Y'all may be seated. All right, let's do our scripture song, or excuse me, scripture verse together. Psalm 3, 3, it's in your bulletin there, and this is the last time we'll say it on Sunday morning, because Lord willing, we'll have a new one for you next Sunday for the month of July. So tonight you'll have an opportunity in the evening service at 6 o'clock to say the verse, the memory verse, and hopefully we'll have some candy for you and reward you for your saying of the verse. Uh, if you do this every month, you're going to do at least 12 verses under your belt for memory, for Bible memory throughout the year, okay? Our uh, Wednesday night folks are learning uh, saw, excuse me, Philippians 2, 5 through 11, a passage. I've never done that before. Uh, doing a whole passage with a group in the church, and we're doing that on Wednesday night. So you can, you can actually do that. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, choir practice, 5 o'clock, and of course the Bible memory verse. I've already gone over a lot of the announcements. So let's go ahead and do the verse together. We'll start with the reference and then the verse and the reference again out loud. Psalm 3, 3, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. Psalm 3, 3. All right. Uh, are we doing the video now? Or you want? I'll just do it after the special. After the special? Okay. Okay. Um, offering. Let's do the offering this time. Come on, guys. We're a little confused because we're going to do uh, the video. I want to show you that video of camp this past week with the juniors. Okay. We'll do that in just a few minutes. We're flexible around here, right? Okay, who's praying, guys? Okay, Jerry. Dear precious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this very blessed and beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to get up and be in your house, among your family, Lord, among our family, and just praise you, give you honor and glory. You're so rich, we deserve it. Lord, we thank you for the many things that you do in our lives, Lord, but we thank you mostly for the salvation of the opportunity that we've seen in teen camp this week of this young dedicating their lives to you and souls being saved. Lord, we also have friends that are hurting this week because of Bob and Vanessa and the loss of their child. And we just ask that you touch them with healing hands. Give them peace by knowing that she is in a better place with no, no ailment, good and good, wondrous thing that is to be. But Lord, we just ask for all these things, Lord, and we just pray. As we offer back, we just appreciate and course as part of what you've given to us, Lord. We just ask that you can further serve your kingdom. We ask your blessing on us. And all these things we pray in Christ's precious name. Amen. Before they do the offering, uh, Jerry prayed for Brother Bob and Vanessa Leach. Uh, they are missionaries that we support uh, with Rock of Ages Prison Ministry. They live locally here in Hampton. And he's preached in our pulpit numbers of times. Their daughter, Vanessa, who had... Rachel, I keep, I always get the names backwards. Bob and Vanessa and then Rachel. She's about 40 years old, I think, approximately. Um, had uh, breast cancer three years ago. She was doing well. Uh, about a week or so ago, she fell over and hit her head. They thought maybe that caused the problem. But they found out the test results of the blood work coming back as they would go back and forth to the cancer doctor over the three years came back great. But they did not know that the cancer had spread to her brain. Uh, the brain had multiple uh, tumors on it. Um, she passed away, I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, I think it was. 
yesterday morning. Yeah, so pray if you would for Bob and, and Vanessa. I know they would covet your prayers, okay? All right, I'm going to have you, all of you stand up with me. We'll open up our songbooks one more time to number three. And then after that, after we get done singing this song, I'm going to have the, camp, uh, the, the kids that went to camp um, come and show you one of their camp cheers that they were learning. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what they've done through camp before they come down. But I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, they motivated those kids to do a lot of things this past week. So let's go ahead and sing number three, Come Thou Fount. All three verses, if you would, please. Come Thou Fount, number three. <clears throat> Come Thou Fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise mine Ebenezer Hither by thy help I'm come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. Y'all may be seated. All right. The group that we brought to camp, and there were just eight young people that, that we brought to camp, but God worked through them in such an amazing way. Three of them got saved. One of them got assurance of salvation. One of them had a commitment to read their Bibles more in their daily devotions. And that's, that's five-eighths of our kids. Now, Carrie said that there were over 10 salvations in this week alone with like 73, 74 young people that came. And they, the amount of kids that's going to be at camp throughout the next three weeks of camp is just increasing. We plan to go back for teen week two, and that is the last Teen week, I think it's like 11 through uh, 15 or 16 July, whatever that week is. I may be off of my dates by one number or so. There's already over 110 teens signed up for that week. Wow. That's going to be a lot. We're stretching those counselors to the max. <laughs> I'm, interested, I'm interested to see what the counselors look like when I get back to camp. Because <laughs> this has been a really, really busy week for them that we, that we were just at. So it's, uh, God is helping them. That is it. But God is also helping our young people. And uh, like I said about motivating the kids, they learned all kind of cheers to help them stay excited. And when they're excited about doing the cheers and excited about playing the games, they were even more excited about learning their verses and uh, learning the Bible and listening to the preaching. Our speaker, we're going to show a couple of clips in, in our video here, he did an amazing job relating to, to our young people on their level. 
And uh, it's going to be funny. I'm not going to give away any secrets on this. Uh, Y'all laugh. It's going to be good. But let's have our our young people that are uh, here right now that went to camp. If y'all could come down here uh, right in front of this little table. And they're going to sing one of their red team camp cheers. And after that, um, we're going to have our special after the kids do their cheer. Which team won this week? Red team. Red team. All right. And when you know, all the kids here are actually on the red team. So we're not going to have any confusion as to blue people singing red cheers, okay? <laughs> all right, now we got uh, a red team in training right here. <laughs> Cheetos. All right, Tristan, you want to lead them? All right, let's give a round of applause for our kids. <laughs> oh, it's, it's something to hear like 40 young people screaming that at the top of their lungs. It's kind of cool. All right, so now we have a special, and then we're going to have a video right after that. I mentioned the last few Sundays, the Lord laid on my heart to preach a message today on Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. This is a song I heard many years ago, and, and when I was in Bible college, a young lady got up and she sang the song. Her name was Gail Wright at the time. She is now Gail Hall. Uh, she married a Horacio Hall, and they passed her in Chesapeake, Virginia, matter of fact. And they're friends of mine and known for many years, but Gail would get up and she'd sing this song. And I, I've never gotten over the words to it. And whenever I come back to it, I always think of her testimony. She loves the Lord very much. Has a beautiful voice, by the way, too. Amy's going to try to sing this one with me this morning. Think about the words. Jesus could come today. Amen. <clears throat> My Lord will come, it may be soon, it could be morning, night, or noon, till then I'll watch and work and pray, when He comes I'll go home there to stay maybe today my lord will come for me maybe today my savior i shall see maybe today from sin i shall be free Jesus will come, and I will go home, it may be today. My Lord will come, I know not when, but this is sure, He'll come again with eager eyes. I'll look and pray In His presence new joy will begin Maybe today My Lord will come for me Maybe today My Savior I shall see Maybe today, from sin I shall be free. Jesus will come and I will go home. It may be today. We'll sing his praise forevermore when we have from all our sin and strife there will no perfect love endless life maybe today
day my Lord will come for me. Maybe today my Savior I shall see. Maybe today from sin I shall be free. Jesus will come and I will go home in maybe today. Jesus will come and I will go home in maybe today. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, let's see what happened to the young people this week.
You understand? I understand. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where are we? You had a very important announcement to make? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you go on? Are you guys on KD Drake's? Where's KD Graves? You said somewhere. Let's get set up, David, please. Okay, there's KD Graves. What about KD Graves? Well, see, I'm getting married. <laughs> Carter, you were one of the counselors, right? All right. They, some of these counselors had things on poles they, the kids could gravitate towards. They know where their counselor was and all. What was on top of yours? It was a, a Norwal. It was a Norwal on top of his. A Norwal. Okay. And then, great, great video. Mr. Daniel, is there a possibility? Put him on the spot this morning. Possibility we could get copies of that? Okay. Those of you parents who... Had kids go or grandparents, you'd like a copy of that to see Mr. Daniel about it, okay? Young people, you are dismissed to junior church this morning. All right. As you can see, they had a great time at camp this week. We praise the Lord for the decisions that were made. We praise the Lord for the safety and so forth at camp. We don't take that for granted. And our young people are safe and sound back home. We're praying that the decisions made in their heart would continue on in their lives as they seek the Lord. And so it's a special time at camp. Lives, lives can be changed. See, preacher, why do you push camp so much, you know? Um, well, I took kids to camp 14 years straight. And uh, I saw the effects of camp. I helped in, in, I led singing for 200 kids. I led singing for juniors and seniors in North Carolina. A lot of times the juniors and seniors go to camp together. And you talk about a challenge that way. That was interesting. But uh, we had a great camps and had always a good time. But seeing many young people make a, a decision at camp. I'll ask you a question. Don't answer out loud, but think to yourself. Why do churches have revivals? Don't, don't answer me. Just think to yourself. We're going over to 2 Kings chapter 2, by the way. Why does a church have a revival? Well, we pray for revival and that God's people would be revived, right? 
For if thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee. That God's people would be right with the Lord and, and also serving him. But why, why do we do that? Why do we have that? Well, why does revival take place in people's hearts during a revival? Let me ask that second question. And I think you'll agree with me that if a person comes to revival, all the services, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday through Friday night, or however long it goes, with each night and each service, it's an opportunity for God to speak to their heart through the Word of God. There is so much today that grabs our attention away from the Lord. And that's why I feel so strongly about going to church and being in church. Every service. Because it's an opportunity that the Spirit of God can work on you, on my heart and your heart too. And that, I look at camp that way. Just as a revival or a missions conference is a concerted effort or a concentrated effort to get more of God's Word in our hearts and what we are to be doing for the Lord and living for Christ. And camp is just like that. I don't know how many chapel services, Carter, how many did they have each day? Two? Two Saturday services, and then they had God and I time, no doubt, with the kids, and they get alone in their Bibles, and they have devotions, and the counselors talk to them, and they have questions and all. You've got a concentrated effort every day. That's why you see more people getting saved that way. I may be wrong, but I don't think I am in this. The more we get our young people and adults, that's why I stress adults, you need to go over to the camp, go to some of the retreats they have. Because in that, those retreats, you'll be able to be with other brothers and sisters in Christ, even beyond what you see here, and be able to strengthen and challenge by the Word of God in your life. So I don't just stress camp, just go have a good time. I believe it can be a good time spiritually. And that God can draw us closer to Him. And that's what you're seeing in the lives of young people. And praying even so, we've seen it in our guys. I know our guys went over to the men's prayer advance over there. Our guys came back fired up about serving the Lord, living for Christ more. So that is possible. The more we get folks around the Word. So let's go to the Word. 2 Kings chapter number 2. Look there with me in verse number 9. This is the story of Elijah getting ready to go up into heaven by a chariot. And my title is Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. As the old song goes. How many of you heard the song, Swing Low, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot? Raise your hand if you would. Okay, many of you. Good, 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 good. You're familiar with the song, most of you then. Um, it's simply talking about the fact that we're hoping and praying that Jesus would come today. And we want that chariot to descend, if you please. Look at the story here. The, Elisha and Elijah. Elisha is the protege after, uh, excuse me, there's one following Elijah. And Elijah's getting ready to go, to back, go up to heaven. And he's going to go by way of a chariot. And he's not going to die. There only, there's only one other man in the Bible that went up to heaven without dying. Amen. And that was, of course, Enoch. Unless you count Paul with his, with his vision of going up to the third heaven and coming back down. But he didn't stay. Uh, but Enoch would be the other one. But Elijah is the one here. Look at verse 9. And they're walking along, these two preachers. And uh, Elisha is going to take over after the ministry of Elijah is completed. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. If you study Elijah's life, you will learn that in Elijah's life, Elijah did a lot of miracles. God did a lot of miracles through his life. But as you see here, he's getting ready to go up to heaven, and Elisha is going to take over. If you study Elisha's life, we have recorded twice as many miracles in Elisha's life as were in Elijah's life. He got the double portion. He goes on in verse 10, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, Elijah say, speaking to Elisha. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. 
But if not, it shall not be so. Verse 11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. I often wonder now, is the rapture going to be almost like a whirlwind going up to heaven? I don't know if we'll have chariots coming down, but I think it's a, this is a fantastic uh, type of, Typology in the Old Testament of you and I, if we're saved, going up to heaven when Jesus comes. And I'm looking forward to that day. I hope you are too. Um, this is what we call the rapture of the believer, the snatching away, the going up to heaven. Uh, some golden daybreak Jesus will come, as the song goes. Unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin unto salvation. I want to go over just a few thoughts, and then I want to finish up the message with some personal heart things related to Jesus coming again, okay? All right? Why I really want to see Him come. But hang tough. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the foundation of this thing called the rapture. Go over to 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 4 with me. What are we talking about when we call it a rapture uh, of the believers or the church in this church age? Definitely. And those who are in uh, cemeteries in the ground are going to be caught up to be together with us in the air. The first, uh, the second coming really is in two phases, ladies and gentlemen. One, it's called the rapture. And then the church is taken on up as it meets Christ in the air. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. You might hear this passage read a lot at a, si a graveside service or in a funeral service. And it's very comforting. That's why we read it. Uh, Jesus Christ had come and he taught and he said these words. He said, I am coming again. I will come again. And in this rapture of the believers, they will go out of this earth. It is known as the first resurrection as we get to this in just a moment. Look at verse number 16, chapter 4. First oh, Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren... Concerning them which are asleep. Now, there was some difficulty in the church at Thessalonica. Uh, some of the problems that they had, they thought they had some, they were all looking for Jesus to come back. And some of their loved ones who had believed on Jesus had already died. So they're concerned, will our loved ones miss their part in this kingdom that Jesus spoke about and Paul preached about? Are they going to miss their part of this? And Paul writes this to comfort them to say, no, you're not going to miss it when Jesus comes. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have died in the Lord, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. That doesn't mean a believer doesn't sorrow when a loved one passes. But we sorrow as, and not as one that has no hope, like a lost person. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we do, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or proceed or go before them which are asleep, those who are in the graves. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, 1 Corinthians tells us it's a twinkling of an eye. A split second, even split even further. Okay? With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, those of us, if Jesus came at this very moment, if we are alive, when he came, we shall be caught up. And that's where we get the word rapture from. What is the rapture? Uh, this resurrection, Jesus uh, says that he will catch us up. Uh, it is the Greek word hapazo. It simply means to be caught away quickly or to be seized, get this, by force. To be seized by force. There are only four other times in the New Testament this word is used in, this in the Greek language. One is where Philip is witnessing to the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch gets saved and the Bible talks and says he was caught away. Philip was caught away. It's the same word we get rapture from. To seize away, to snatch away, if you please. Uh, Acts 23.10, the soldiers there um, 
Paul has been preaching and now he's going to have to go to jail and the soldiers are coming and the Bible says to take Paul by force. Listen, listen to what the meaning of the word means. We just think, okay, I'm going to go up in the air and that's it. But this is going to be a very snatching away, if you please, or seizing us by force. <clears throat> For some of us who are bigger than others, it may take a little, bit, a little bit faster, but God will seize you, and like me, and you will go up. You had to go there, didn't you, preacher? Okay. Uh, the feeding of the 5,000, John 6, 15. The Bible says when Jesus had done what he had done with the feeding of the 5,000, men came to take him by force. It's the same word in the Greek language, herpazo, that means a, sne a seizing, a snatching away. These men at that time were trying to take Christ and make him set up his kingdom at the moment. The last time, the fourth time in the New Testament is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 2. And it says, when lost, we were carried away unto these dumb idols. Notice, before we were saved, our, our, our inclination was just carried away to worship that which is not true, not God. This is a snatching away or a seizing, if you please. And this is what the word means. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, don't turn there, please. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Talks about us being changed. Who's going to be raptured? Only the dead in Christ who have believed will be raptured. Only those who remain. If Jesus comes today, the... Graves will open up first, and they'll be taking the bodies out, and they'll go up to meet the Lord in the air, and we'll go up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Preacher, why do they get to go first? Well, they got six feet further to go. Just think about it. All right. Uh, there is a first, and there is a second resurrection. Revelation 20 says, And the dead in Christ shall rise first. We know that. But Re Revelation 20, verse 6, says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And we have the tribulation period of seven years, then the millennial reign of a thousand years. During that seven years that we are up in heaven with the Lord at the marriage supper of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ for the believer. Then we come back in what we know as the second coming. When he comes in the air and he comes and his feet touch the Mount of Olives. In the first coming, he comes and he comes in the air. And as we go to meet him in the air. What will happen when the rapture takes place? The Bible says, little children, it is the last time, 1 John 2, 18. Christians, we, we have the edge Christian camp, but if you think about it, Christians are always living on the edge. Spiritually speaking, we're waiting for Christ to come at any moment. Right? And that ought to excite us as believers. If anybody says... I can set a date. I think Jesus will come next week at 1022 on Monday. Well, you know, that's not true. Now, if he just so happens to come, that come, that's it. But it's not because you or I predict the date of it. The Bible says only the Father knows the day or the hour when Christ will come back again. But until then, watch and pray is what we're doing. Uh, for in such an hour, therefore be ye also ready for, ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He will. He will do so. And that trumpet will sound, Miss Elizabeth, one day. Where'd she go? She's somewhere. She's over here. Maybe you can be one of the ones and play it as you're going on up. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. The trumpet will sound and Jesus will come. Question, why is there going to be a rapture? I'm laying a foundation here and then we're going to get to the heart of the message in just a minute. So... But to get to the heart of the message, I need you to really listen to me. Why is there going to be a rapture? I think firstly because there's going to be a rescue. Because God has told us that the believer will not go through wrath. The tribulation period. And Jesus Christ will come and he will rescue us out. To where we will not have to go through the tribulation period. Preacher, what do you, what do you mean? You got Bible to back it up? Well, you know I do. Okay, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, 
that whether we wake or sleep or in the ground, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. First Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that is found in Revelation 3.10. God will take us up. We do not have to face the wrath that's going to take place. Do you know back in Bible times, a young man fell in love with a young lady. And to go through the procedure of getting married, he and his father would talk. And then the father would send him with some camels, animals, could be things from the garden, could be money, could be anything. And the groom would go to the young lady's house and he would negotiate with her father, how you like this one, ladies, and pay a price for her. It was called the redemption price. Oh, here we go. It was called the redemption price. Uh, a dowry, please, baby. I don't know. The dowry would be given by the, dad, the wife's uh, daddy, wouldn't she? But in Bible times, he would go, the groom would go, and he would pay a redemption price for his bride. Uh, they, they would then celebrate together and pledge themselves together to one another. And the groom would go back to his daddy's house and he'd build a place for himself and his bride to be. Back at the daddy's house. Interesting. All right. And just at the right time, not set by the bride, Just at the right time, not set by the bride, but by the groom and his father. The groom returned. He may even come at midnight. You remember the story of the ten virgins? Five were ready and five were not. Somebody would shout to the bride, Behold, the bridegroom comes! She'd get her things, she'd go out to meet him, he'd carry her away to a secluded place where they'd consummate the marriage. And that is exactly, ladies and gentlemen, what we're talking about, the rapture of the believer, the church. We will go up to a secluded place in the air and meet him. That is not the place where the Bible says, and every eye shall see him. That is in the second coming. It is a beautiful picture, and the Jews knew exactly what Paul was talking about. Definitely so. Where will it take place? It's going to happen in that secluded place. It's going to meet us in the air. The Lord Jesus is going to do so. All right, I said I'd give you just a few thoughts here. Okay? I want to point out just five reasons why I do long for Jesus to come. First number one is simply this. I'm going to be, and if you're a believer, you're entering in with what I'm saying. I'm going to be delivered from this old sinful world. The more I have to fight the battles of this life and the flesh and all the other things and the battles of the world and the devil, the more I long for to be in heaven and it be over. I don't want to fight the battle. Some people want to live to be 100 years old. That's fine. Glory to God. If God blesses you with 100 years, that's fine. I'd rather go on to heaven. That's me. I don't want to have to live under the duration of the curse of this earth of sin. I want to be delivered from this sinful world. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I'm not building a permanent place down here. There's some believers that are building a house down here, building homes and things down here, and that's fine. Having a nice home, is not, I'm not against that. I'm saying, if you're building just for this world, then you've missed it. Amen. The Bible says the things that we see are temporary. The things that we cannot see are eternal. 
I hath not seen, neither is ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Glory to God. I don't want to live for this world. I'm a pilgrim walking through this place. And I definitely don't want to, I want to be delivered of the sinfulness of this world. You know, sin has marred this world so much. We had a great victory with the thing, with the, the uh, decision by the Supreme Court. Roe versus Wade. Amen. Many Christians have prayed for many years to see that. I understand that abortion can continue in the states, and I understand all that. But thank God, at least now, spoken from a national level, that no longer is it to be allowed. At least nationally, what we're talking about. I know, again, the states can make their decisions. But I praise God for His goodness in all of that and answered prayer. But bless God, when I get to heaven, I won't have to worry about that. We we'll have to deal with the sinfulness of this world and the results of sin in this world. People going out and burning and looting and, and all these other things. Destroying. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when I get to heaven, that won't be there. Yeah, man. I we'll have to put up with that no more. Glory to God. The results of sin, my hearts go out to, my hearts go out to moms and dads who maybe have to go through great heartache and great struggle because of a spouse that doesn't want to serve God or is not saved. And, and that's a hard thing. And the hearts are heavy with sin, broken lives, all the... You go up to New York City, everybody looks at all the beauty of the, of the giant buildings and all the things there, and it is a beautiful place, I'm sure. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, behind those doors is the reeking and havoc of sin that goes on in the hearts of people and then sometimes comes outside those doors. But bless God, my heavenly city is going to be much more beautiful and there will be no more sin. I'll be glad, Brother Jimmy, I'll be delivered from it. Oh, the day of sweet deliverance. And the redeemed will be delivered from this sinful world. And by the way, the devil come up knocking on the door of heaven when I'm in there. And you're in there. Sorry, you can't come in. Come on now. Does the devil give you a hard time? He gives me a hard time. When I get to heaven, he will not be allowed in. Amen. Hallelujah. He will not be allowed in. Glory to God. To live a life without Satan. His temptations and his evilness. Uh, once inside the eastern gate, we can say goodbye to the devil in heaven. It's called a veil of tears down here. The longer I stay here, the more anxious I belong for Jesus to come with sweet chariot. Come on down, Lord. Take us on home. The second reason is simply this. I want to be delivered from this sinful nature that's inside my body. Do you have battles? Do you have struggles with your nature, your sinful nature? I guarantee you, you do. And if you're a saved person, you got it even worse. Lost person, they, that's all they do. They just go and follow their evil nature. The carnal nature. The Adamic nature of Adam. You and I, we're trying to fight against that. Because we know it will hurt us. We try to protect our children from that which is evil because it's a sinful nature. It's a wickedness. We don't want that. We don't want to conquer. We don't have let it take over our lives. We, one of these days, bless God, I won't have to deal with that anymore. Amen. Every last one of us got corrupt natures living inside of us. Paul said this, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. 
For to will is present with me. In other words, the will to do what is right is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, if I do that, I would not. In other words, if I sin and I don't want to do that, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. O wretched man that I am, Paul said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? What's the next verse? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I have that battle every day of my life. You do too. You know what I'm talking about. How are you defeating it? Jesus Christ. And one day, blessed be God, I won't even have to be around it. Won't have to deal with that sinful part of my heart anymore. The carnal nature rebels against the truth of God. It resists to doing the will of God without fighting it. The flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And it's a battle that you and I face every day. We learn daily that our worst enemy is ourself. Our praying is weak because of self. Our witnessing, our soul winning is weak because of self. Our faith is weak because of self. Our joy is diminished and we have lack of joy in our lives because of self and sinfulness in our nature and our evilness. But one day we won't have to bother with that anymore. First John says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Number three, I want to see Jesus. I want to see the Lord. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. It's going to be a crowning day at heaven. I'm going to get my crown and I'm going to cast it at Jesus' feet. He where He's glorified. Why? Why am I going to serve God? Because I want to take those crowns and I want to cast them at His feet. It's going to be a joyous day filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I kind of picture it a little bit like the... They did when Jesus came riding on the donkey into heaven, I mean into Jerusalem, and how the folks took their shirts off and the men and put it down on the ground and how they took the palm leaves and put it down there and said, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh. In the name of the Lord. It's going to be a glorious day to see Jesus. It's going to be a conquering day. All the battles will be over. It's going to be an assuring day. Assuring that all those battles will be over. We're oftentimes frustrated with trying to serve the Lord here by our own flesh and corruption. But one day the battle will be no, the flesh will be no more. And I will see Jesus as He is. I want a reunion in those days. The Bible says that when Jesus comes in the air and those in the grave go up and we're caught up with them, snatched away, seized away with them. It's going to be a reunion in heaven. I got some loved ones there. My mom and dad are over there. My grandma and grandpa on my mama's side are over there. I've got a lot of folks that I've had the privilege to know down through the years in the ministry, in churches I've pastored and places I've served the Lord in, that I love deeply. A lot of folks are in, they're from this place here. I look forward to seeing Miss Katie again. I look forward to seeing Miss Arlene again. I, I, I look forward, some of you don't know her, Ms. Owens again. Oh, she was one of my favorites, Al. I love Ms. Owens. Had the most quickest wit. Uh, I'll see all the loved ones that I have. And it's going to be a grand reunion. Do you think ha heaven's going to be a happy place? I guarantee you it's going to be a happy place. I get to see my loved ones all over again. Friends that I've known, folks, I've, people I've led to the Lord, had the privilege to lead to the Lord. And they've gone on already ahead of me? Mm. Don't tell me I'm not looking forward to that. I'm going to meet them in the air. And lastly, when the swing low sweet chariot comes, Jesus is going to bring his reward with him. And I'm going to be rewarded for all the hours and all the time and all the labors. And you will too. All of us will. And then one day we'll cast those crowns at Jesus' feet. One preacher said this, if you have the same nature as Jesus Christ when he comes again, you're the one who's going to go up. You have that new nature.
in Jesus Christ. Whether you're beneath the ground or on top of the ground, you're going to go up. If you've been heaven born, you're going to be heaven bound. Hey, man, preacher, I like that. That was good. You're going to be heaven born. If you are heaven born, you'll be heaven bound. There will be signs of the times until then. But those signs don't predict necessarily exactly when the second coming will be. But they do confirm that it will be. I like that too. I may not know the when and when Jesus is coming, but I know why. And he's coming to snatch us away. May it be so, Lord. May it be soon. Let's bow in prayer. The bridegroom will come and take his bride and take us back. One of these days when he comes in the second coming, we're going to come with him. Glory to God. I think I'm going to be preaching a little more and getting into the second coming of Christ. My dear friend, are you ready? Are you ready if Jesus came today? Are you ready to go to heaven? Do you know for sure that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Are you born again? Make sure today. We have no promise of tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. The Bible talks about our life as like a vapor of smoke that, that passes away. And it, a vapor of smoke passes so quickly away. Make sure you know Jesus now. The young people this week did so. Uh, several of them did so. One young person got saved at the last night, in the last moment there, at the fireside where the other young people started giving testimonies of how they had been saved already or either got saved at camp that week. And one of those young people heard all that and at that fireside got saved. Now, we don't know when the last when the trumpet will sound. Therefore, we need to be ready. Therefore, be ye also ready, the Bible says. Christian, are you ready? If the Lord should come today, is there something in your life that you'd be ashamed of if Jesus came today? Let's make that right with the Lord today, and let's get it right and go on serving Christ with all our heart, soul, mind, and might, and strength. Let's love God. Let's serve Him. And not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Jesus could come today. If you believe that, then you'll respond to that in your heart. Please stand. As a uh, piano is playing, as Amy's playing, the altar's open. You come. Maybe some things in your heart you need to, with heads bowed and eyes closed, you need to have some things in your heart you need to get right with the Lord today. Come. The Lord will meet you here. He loves you. He wants you to face Him when He comes and not be ashamed before Him. He wants you to know that He's looking forward to the coming even more than we are. May God give us that same heart. If you have the nature of Jesus Christ, if you've been born again, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. You've been made anew, regenerated, made anew, born again in God's in, in God's uh, spiritual design in your heart, when you got saved, you were birthed anew. And if Jesus came, you will go. Let's look forward to it. Let's talk about it. Let's rejoice in it. Let's encourage you. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I didn't read it, but that's the last verse in that passage in 1 Thessalonians. Comfort one another. A lot of times we do read that at a funeral, and we do comfort one another. Well, why can't we comfort one another now? When we get together, hey, you know, I heard Jesus is coming. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let's live in the air of the second coming, of this, especially this rapture. And our redemption shall be complete in Christ. Something to rejoice about today, believer. Something to thank Jesus for.
Let's thank God for his salvation and the fact that I will come again and receive you unto myself. Father, I thank you for the fact that you one day will send your son. And one day we will hear that trumpet sound and we will go to meet you. And Lord Jesus, we do pray it will be quickly, even today. In Jesus' name, amen. Five o'clock choir practice, six o'clock service. Come on back tonight. Amen.